Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about how we can use Yasara, a modeling package, to improve the thermostability of a protein. What is Yasara? Yasara is a common protein modeling package with a variety of uses. Some of these uses include reliably building a homology model for your protein, checking the non-covalent interactions between your protein and other proteins, as well as mutating the amino acid sequences of your protein manually to achieve some desired effect. So how it works is it uses a protein databank file or a PDB file found online, which actually shows the crystallography um, of your structure and the amino acid uh, sequence of your structure um, and uses this to build a structural model as well as um, do very useful calculations of your protein. For example, we're gonna, today we're gonna talk about um, the protein of relevance for our iGEM team, the 3LL2, or monomeric Graffitsen. You can actually change how you can view this protein by function key. So you can make it an atomic model, a covalent molecular model, um, but I like the anti-parallel beta barrel sheet that's shown through the ribbon model. And the first thing that we do before we start is we use the Foldex platform to repair our object. And once we repair our object, it creates um, a it spits out the output of a new sequence and a new um, structure of how our protein should fold in its most thermostable state um, in cellular conditions. Okay, so right now it's crunching a lot of numbers. Right now you can see it's going really quickly, but what's actually going on is it's looking through every amino acid and looking at its disulfide interactions, its non-covalent interactions. You can see the entropy and it stops at certain amino acids because they have high energy. And right now it's going through every one of the 123 acids, amino acids. So right now it's at six, so it's gonna take a while. But as you can see, lysine A at the sixth position is taking a long time because it has high energy, but it's very useful and really good that we start out with the, just a base level of repairness of our object. One of the questions I ask is how reliable is this? And after looking at the literature, I realized that over 800 people, 800 publications have cited this. Um, as you can see, they have an advertisement for this long um, citation here. But a lot of people use it, and there are some margin of error that they, calc that they have calculated on their um, web page that's very useful. But in general, the trends are the same. Something that is more thermostable significantly by Asara is most likely going to be thermostable in the lab. And we confirmed this um, last year. And right now we have two objects overlaid upon each other. And on the top right, you can see that they both are visible. But if we delete both of them, we can see that this is our old structure and this is our new structure. They're very similar um, and that should be good. We shouldn't see a radical change because the crystallography structure should be very um, repaired already. So once we repair, we can also use the Foldex platform to check the stability through stability of our object. I'm not gonna subject you to more torture and more data crunching, but it gives us a number. And that's our base delta G value or the free energy of our protein. And we actually judge the thermostability of our protein. Thermostability meaning how, how resistant it is to denaturation at higher temperatures using this delta G value. And we want it to be um, very low. Okay, so then after we check the stability, we would do something called position scan. And position scan is a super useful tool, but it takes a very long time. What you can do through position scan is you can choose certain amino acids. So you can choose serine one, for example, and you can press A, and A means that you're gonna check every amino acid, um, all the 19 combinations outside of serine, at the first position and see how those change the interactions. So I can do that for this one. I'm gonna press okay, it's gonna take a long time. We're gonna look through every single amino acid and it looks at the similar um, energy calculations of disulfide bonds, uh, helix dipoles, certain standard things. And it's also gonna spit out a new object. And right now we're doing this for one amino acid, but normally I would do this for every single amino acid for a protein. Um, it's going to take a while, but um, it's going to go through every amino acid, as I mentioned, and it should give us a really cool output, and I can explain how that works. And through this, we're able to see which amino acids are problematic and contribute to a lot of thermal instability. 
as we go forward, mutate these certain specific problematic amino acids to ones that are more um, conformationally stable, and then thus create a more robust model of our protein that's not super altered, but has mutations that increase its thermal stability. So we should be almost done with this. Okay, here's the output. We can go to our ESR package, go to the PLG folder, look at the full dex cache, and then look at the energies. So we want these energies to be as low as possible. And right now, originally with the serine, we have an 8.43. Um, this is delta delta G values. And all these values are about similar, except for this one I think is the lowest one, 8.05 or 4. And we can't really change this because this whole um, position scan has a margin of error of 0.5 um, kilojoules per mole. And with this, it, we haven't really proven that 8.4 is any more stable than the tryptophan. So therefore, we can't change the serine. Um, and once we show that there are some problematic amino acids, we can do what I think is the coolest program, which is mutate multiple residues. And what you can do is you can choose this, that serine one. And I know that serine one wants to be a um, leucine. So I can press an L. And what it would do is it would create another model of what it would look like if this was a leucine instead of a serine at the first position. And what's really good is that it's pretty quick at the one amino acid level, but at, when you're changing 123, it's very slow. And it's really cool because it would show us an output. The output looks something like not this, but it would also give us similar results where it shows us the overall energy change. And I think this is what our whole process looks like. So you're going to look at you're going to repair the molecule, you're going to check its stability, you're going to position scan for problematic amino acids, you're going to mutate those amino acids um, using the position scan to show which amino acids are more favorable, and then you're going to compare that output to the stability you calculated earlier, and hopefully you should have a more robust idea of what a thermostable protein of yours looks like. And this is how we actually found through modeling and confirmed experimentally our Yasara thermostable, thermostable in its monomeric form. I hope you enjoyed and thank you.